Is iPhone 14 Pro Max ready to really compete with a full-frame mirrorless camera for video shooting? Let's find out. What's good guys? To fully see the difference, I suggest you watch this video on a big monitor or a TV in 4K. So on the left we have the iPhone's picture, we use One X camera right now, it's the best camera with the biggest sensor and on the right we have Sony a7S III shooting in 4K 30. This time I decided not to pick super fast lenses, that is why I'm using 24-70 f4 Sony Zeiss lens at 24mm and f7.1 to more or less equal the positions of those two cameras because iPhone sensor is super tiny and the depth of field is very big. Also on the Sony we use S-Log3 and I upgraded it a little bit and auto white balance. You can read all of the settings throughout the entire video down in the corners. And yeah, I do watch this video on my 5K iMac full screen so I do see every little single detail. So what do we see here guys? Straight away we see very strong over sharpening of the iPhone. Guys, once again, I'm saying it in all of my videos, I hate this over sharpened look. It looks good on the small screen, like on the iPhone screen, but when you look at this, like on the big screen, you see that it has very little detail, a lot of over sharpening and kind of smearing because of the digital noise reduction. And the camera looks a bit noisier, but still we see a ton more detail. And also the colors are very different. iPhone loves to make the sky look super blue, which I don't like. It doesn't look really natural to my eye, so I do prefer Sony's picture in this term. And the skin tones also look really different. On the iPhone they look like very flat and kind of pinkish reddish ones and on the Sony they look much more natural to my eye. Of course you can add this sharpen effect to Sony camera to make it look like iPhone's footage, but I don't like to add sharpening, I prefer to even soften the image a little bit to make it look more natural and cinematic. Now let's have a look at the ultra-wide camera, 0.5x, it's a 13mm full-frame equivalent versus Tamron 17-28, 17mm, and as you can see, iPhone is pretty much wider, but 0.5x camera has smaller sensor, that is why it applies more noise reduction and more sharpening, and it overall looks softer than the 1x camera on the iPhone. And as you can see guys, the difference is pretty dramatic. We cannot even see the stripes on the trousers of this lady at the left, but we do see those patterns on the dress of the lady in black and the stripes on the pants. I guess it's needless to say that the Sony is winning hands down in this regard. We also have a 3x camera 77mm full frame equivalent versus Sony's eyes at 70mm and as you can see guys the difference in color is pretty dramatic. I don't like iPhone's color and also as you can see we have once again very little detail, a ton of noise reduction, pretty smudgy picture and to be honest guys I would prefer overall to shoot only with the 1x camera because it provides you the best results. iPhone 4 14 Pro Max now has a pretty bright setting in auto brightness up to 2000 nits of brightness and even the sunny weather mode on the Sony a7S III is nowhere near uh, that bright. So it's a very welcome addition and also you can see how much bigger the iPhone screen is. I love this bright and vivid screen iPhones are known to have the best video stabilization on the market, so now let's compare it to Sony's Steady Shot Active Mode with even stabilized lens. Sony's Ice 24-70 has the built-in stabilization as well, but as you can see guys, the iPhone is just destroying the Sony in terms of stabilization. It's super good. And if we try to walk with 3x camera, you can see it's not even comparable. Also iPhone 14 Pro now has an action mode with 2.8K resolution and a huge crop, but still it's doing some magic. I almost run in this shot handheld without even attaching the phone to the camera for more weight and stability. And the results are pretty amazing, but I don't like the drop in resolution and a huge crop. And here how it looks with the Sony with no stabilization, but Sony has a special software called Catalyst Browse and you can do kind of the same thing using the gyroscopic data and stabilize this video in post. The results are also pretty good, but still iPhone's uh, kind of built-in action mode is better. 
Now let's have a look at dynamic range with One X camera. Here we have the Aslog 3 with the Sony camera. And as you can see, we have a ton of detail in the shadows and in the highlights. Everything is protected and we have a room to play around with. iPhone on the other hand also does have a ton of dynamic range thanks to computational videography combining two different exposures, two different shots. But in terms of color, it's pretty much weak but if you color grade this footage it also looks pretty decent in my opinion and we do keep the shadows and the highlights information so the dynamic range is very close here is a pretty tough shot for any camera guys so the sun is hitting the camera straight on we can see a little flare from the iphone and it's pretty distracting much more distracting than on the actual lens on the sony camera and we can see that the sun is kind of super overexposed with the iphone but with the camera it looks more or less natural and also iphone struggles a lot because of different flaring as you can see in this example because it has really tiny optics and it's very hard to make them not to flare the good news is that 4K60 on the iPhone is kind of the same quality as the 4K30. And now let's compare it to 4K60 on the Sony camera. Once again, we see very similar images, super oversaturated sky in my opinion, and too much noise reduction and over sharpening on the iPhone. That's just super annoying. I wish we could lower the sharpening levels in camera, but I think it's not going to happen anytime soon. And here is the shot from Sony and we are coming to the iPhone 0.5x camera and look at the grass guys. Here is the corner shot and you can see how bad the over sharpening and noise reduction is. It's just a complete mess, not grass, but mess. Kind of poetic a little bit. And one more shot from the iPhone 1x camera to the Sony and you can see the difference by yourself guys. So now let's talk about the cinematic mode. It now can shoot in 4K 30 and 24 frames per second, which is cool of course, but still you can see the fake blur doing not the best job with my ears, my hair, and overall looks kinda fake. And especially if you have a look under my arms, we have little holes in here and we have no blur between those. So it's super fun and you gotta be careful shooting in this mode. And here is the 3x camera it's getting even worse because my ears are doing such a weird thing and you can see that between my fingers we have no blur as i said guys if you stop down you have better results but still as you can see between my fingers we do have this super not blurry part which is very annoying but still f8 looked better than f4 as you can see on this example and now let's put on a fast lens 35 millimeter f18 and still you can see that the fake blur is not doing a good thing between my fingers and overall the image is super over sharpened i look not that natural with the iphone's image so you'd better use this mode carefully you can make cinematic mode look better if you apply a little bit of corrections as i show you here so as you can see it's more than okay it's looking fine because of the location good lighting color grading a little bit of green some ladder box and all that things so i have a full video tutorial on cinematic mode and how to make it better it's with the iphone 13 pro max but it applies to 14 pro max as well i'll leave a link down below so when it comes to objects as you can see right here we have the same situation it does look pretty cool and really sharp but still between the legs of this toy we have no blur at all on 1x camera and on 3x camera it's doing kind of the same job now let's have a look at slow motion iphone 14 pro max still has 1080p slow motion and sony has a 4k in 120p and as you can see guys the difference is super dramatic and huge iphone skips lines we have no details super over sharpened so 4k 60 is the best mode for slow motion on the iphone and the time lapses in 14 pro max are still in 1080p kind of the same as in 13 pro max and i have a video sony a7s3 versus 13 pro max and you can learn about time lapses from that video and it's also super fun to watch how the iphone is getting better from year to year once again, the link is in the description. And in terms of macro capabilities, 0.5x camera has awesome macro capabilities, as you can see here. But I also do love the image from Tamron 1728 with Sony A7S III. So it's up to you to pick which one is better for you. And now let's compare the sound quality. 
Welcome to Georgia guys, this is the sound of the iPhone 14 Pro Max and this is the sound, whoa, and this is the sound of the iPhone, uh, Sony a7S III with the DHD4 mini microphone, $50 mic, pretty cheap one. And now guys, we're still at about one and a half meters away from the microphone and this is the sound of the Sony a7S III built-in microphone against iPhone 14 Pro Max. And now guys, it's time to talk about low light performance. So as you can see, you can make a good low light shot with iPhone 14 Pro Max using the One X camera. And now let's have a look at those two. We have f4 lens on the Sony a7S III and ISO 12800, second native ISO in s log 3 And as you can see guys, the digital noise reduction and over sharpening is doing its thing and especially in the corners we have this noisy mess and a ton of noise reduction. We have also a 2x camera by the way guys, let's have a look at its low light performance, it's a crop from the main sensor and um, it's not even comparable guys, so it's super noisy, super noise reduced and over sharpened and Sony is just killing it. The 3x camera, the same thing, no grass, no texture on the little building, even no bricks, uh, the Sony is a bit noisy, but it's nothing close to iPhone's noise, which is huge. And the 0.5x camera, which is the noisiest, I guess, from all three. Ah, very poor image quality, guys. So no grass, no texture, only the noise reduction. And it's getting even worse when you start to move. We see this ghosting effect. The image kind of doubles because of the stabilization. Ton of light leaks. We have a ton of you know, little lights that reflect the light. And all in all, uh, you'd better use a gimbal in low light with the iPhone. And the Sony is looking super clean in my opinion. So here are the little light leaks that I'm talking about, kind of reflections of the light and it's a huge pain in the ass guys. And also we have oversaturated, overexposed blue color on the iPhone as well. Sanya, скажи привет. Hello. <laughs> That's my friend Sanya. Hello. Alexander. <laughs> And the flares and light leaks are also pretty huge on the iPhone. So it's not the best low light camera, as you might imagine. To conclude, I'm really glad that smartphone video is getting better and better. But still, there are too many limitations that don't allow me to use my iPhone as the main camera. In good lighting conditions and with a certain knowledge and post-processing, you're definitely able to get great shots. But the laws of physics are unbeatable at this point and I'll be still taking my Sony a7S III with me wherever I go. So what do you think guys, are you ready to film only with your iPhone, considering that more than 80% of content these days is viewed on smartphones? Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to smash the like and subscribe bottles of Georgian wine. My name is Oleg Nikitin and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.